Well, by true definition, we have seen a major sudden stratospheric warming taking place and likely a final stratospheric warming as well. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogue's European Outlook. We go dramatically from record strong winds blowing at uh, 10 millibars uh, surrounding the polar vortex to uh, an easterly. So we're basically going from record strong to record weak in the space of a few days. And uh, it's about as dramatic as you're going to see. You can see here that uh, off the ECMWF where um, we were in uh, very strong territory then it's dropped off a cliff to record weak territory as we progress uh, through the current period at the moment here. So the winds have reversed and uh, you can see very nicely in this animation here uh, the response, that very powerful warming taking place out of uh, Eurasia across the top, blowing apart the polar vortex into pieces. It looks as if one piece went into North America, the other piece into Europe. And the response to this is likely to be no, no beast from the east is expected. No extreme cold spell is expected either. But we are likely to increase the high latitude blocking as we progress through the second half of March and likely into the first half of, uh, of April at the very least. Now at the moment we've got very mild conditions across North America, Pacific Air flooding the country of the united states and also across europe we're seeing very mild conditions here as well but we are now obviously seeing arctic air getting driven southwards as high pressure builds up into uh, iceland and greenland and as i explained in yesterday's video we are likely to see um uh you know a fairly persistent flow coming in from a north northeasterly direction below average temperatures this is how it's looking um over the next day uh, seven days in terms of precipitation drier than average and that takes us all the way out towards the end of march uh due to the blocking increase and in, you can see here off the gfs ensemble all the way out to the 19th through the 26th of march we've got drier than average conditions as a consequence of a a, a lack of westerly momentum within the middle altitude pattern uh, as you build pressure Obviously, with the, the, sh the strengthening of uh, the, the, the stratospheric warming, that then uh, creates an expansion of the stratosphere and a contraction of the, the troposphere and forces high pressure to build underneath that strong warming. That is the reason why we see an increase in blocking. Therefore, we weaken and buckle the jet stream. And, you know, essentially it depends on where you're positioned. You could be positioned underneath the block which means we've got milder than average conditions, or you could be underneath uh, a core of cold air. You know, one of those pieces of the, the, the polar vortex drops into the middle altitudes. You could be stuck underneath one of those lobes of cold air, and you essentially see uh, a cold spell um, develop. So this is the upcoming five days off the GFS ensemble. You can see here, firmly below average in the day six through ten, Still below average, but notice this weakening slightly. But this is now pe uh, the period between the 15th and the 20th. And then the 11th to 15th day, we start to see something slightly milder developing. Looking at the latest uh, CFSV2 weeklies, and uh, the CFSV2 is not banned into anything majorly cold for certainly Western Europe anyway. But what we are going to see is a big contrast between cold and average across the UK and Ireland versus abnormally warm conditions down into the very areas that had been cold during the second half of uh, February here. Remember, we had quite mild conditions in the west, very cold conditions in the east. Looks as if we're going to reverse that pattern uh, through the next seven days. And uh, we could see some really exceptional warmth across uh, the east of the con continent. Obviously, we've seen some very mild conditions uh, across central, even part of the west of Europe. We've seen temperatures close to 20 Celsius both Saturday and Sunday across parts of England. That is going to be a, a distant memory as we go through the, the rest of this week and likely through the weekend and into next week as well. But it's really this um, th th this likely high latitude block and pattern that, that responds to that sh sudden stratospheric warming. We're likely to see that uh, the, the extremes of both mild versus uh, cold in the pattern it's just difficult to pinpoint 
exactly where we will be positioned in terms of the, the overall setup. But I'm fairly confident anyway that we're going to start to see less in the way of wet and windy and more in the way of drier conditions and higher pressure. So this is a CFSV2 uh, upcoming week. This is week two. And then this is in the week three. Again, not seeing anything wet than average all the way through the first half of, of April here. And that is what you're going to see in terms of response to this final strap warming. Now, usually when you get the block and high pressure to the north, uh, drier than average conditions across the UK and Ireland, you get wetter conditions for, forced further south. And that is exactly what we're seeing across Iberia, southern France, into much of Italy, uh, the Alpine region, etc., etc. And I'm concerned about flash flooding in this part of the world due to this uh, this overall hemispheric setup taking place. You can see here very dramatically as well with 10 millibars. Look at that strong warming taking place. So we've raised the temperature really from uh, close to minus 60 to near minus 20 at 10 millibars. Even more dramatic of a warming at 30 millibars. This is uh, slightly lower down through the, the stratosphere. We've went from essentially close to minus 75 to only minus 28 Celsius. So a very, very sharp warming in a very short space of time. This like, looks to be the earliest final strap warming since March 2016. And uh, so I just want to emphasize the point that uh, while we're seeing a major sun stratospheric warming, it is far earlier than usual, good four or five weeks ahead of schedule. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see significant cold, but it also doesn't mean that we cannot cut cold. It just depends on exactly what uh, the, the the overall ridge trough sequence uh, and where it parks itself. That's going to be uh, the golden question. So looking at uh, the uh, polar view, and let's have a quick look and see what the modeling is suggesting in terms of the, uh, the the blocking situation here. So let's have a look at uh, the GFS, which we're on at the moment here. Let's look at the Northern Hemisphere. And let's have a look at the, the 500 millibar geopotential height anomalies. So there's that strong block, strongest block in the Northern Hemisphere, now centered uh, between Iceland and Greenland. We've got a deep trough that is uh, driving some very unsettled conditions across the southwest of Europe at the moment here. Play through this loop, and you can see here that that block persists across Greenland and Iceland. There's the deep trough now uh, descending uh, the core of that trough, actually, over France. We've got another core down near the Azores here. So there's your, your, your classic negative North Atlantic Oscillation. Let's have a quick look, actually. We've not looked at this in a little while here, but uh, this is the Arctic Oscillation going a uh, slightly negative and then it's expected to actually go firmly positive which is quite interesting let's have a quick look at the north atlantic oscillation and see what it's suggesting slightly weaker uh, than the neutral level at the moment here so certainly the gfs ensemble is not indicating a, a significantly negative arctic oscillation or na north atlantic oscillation which is quite interesting but uh, certainly uh, you know if we go back to the 500 millibar over the the Northern hemisphere play through this loop you can see here that that high then starts to shift up into scandinavia with a negative underneath so again we could start to see an easterly flow and all depending on how much colder there is over central europe this is going to be the question so let's have a quick look at the the european view and see what the 850s are looking like so there's that setup there that is a very interesting synoptic set up at the moment here for uh, yesterday march 10th let's have a look at uh, the 850s then and you can see the uh, the colder sinking southwards continue to play through we continue to see this feed of northerly air cold air at 850 continue to play through and there's that high pressure then scooting off up into scandinavia and uh, generally speaking, the GFS is indicating that we start to see milder conditions moving back in once again towards Saturday, the 22nd of, uh, of March. Looking at the ECMWF then, and we'll finish off with that. Play through the loop here. I've not actually looked at that just yet, so uh, we're looking at it at the same time together. Continue to see that northerly flow through the remainder of this week. 
Then in the weekend, we've got that area of high pressure. I think with clear skies, lighter winds, we're going to see some very cold nights uh, as a consequence. And then we see milder conditions moving in towards Thursday of next week. So that's around the 20th of March. So again, like I say, slowing down of the, the westerly flow. It looks as like if a drier than average pattern is going to set in through the remainder of March into the first half of April. But exactly what kind of temperature setup we get, well, that remains to be seen. I hope you're enjoying the content here on the channel. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with more. Bye for now.